Look, it, it, it doesn't matter what adjective I choose to use, okay? Disgusting, unacceptable, reprehensible, malfeasance. It, the, the adjectives don't matter because I don't think any of this matters to this organization. Now, yesterday was egregious on a number of fronts and a number of levels. But in a place like Detroit, that's acceptable because Jim Caldwell is still employed. What I saw yesterday is something that I have never seen before. I've watched football since I can remember. I have never seen a team take a snap with nine players on the field. I have never seen it. Occasionally, in anywhere but Detroit, or in Detroit on a semi-regular basis, I see teams caught with 10 guys on the field. 99% of the time, you get yourself a timeout, or you panic and throw the challenge flag, and you lose the timeout anyways. But you do whatever it takes. You don't take a snap with 10. Now here, Jim Caldwell's made it tradition. As traditional as Better Made or Fago or Verner's. Getting caught with 10 guys on the field is just what you do here. And I've ranted and screamed and yelled and demanded his head. But nine men on the field on a critical third down when you're down seven in the midst of another one of your phony little comebacks, people, that's fireable. And here's the problem, and I, and I want to draw a parallel, okay? This stuff, okay, and I have a different word I'd like to use for stuff, can't do it. This stuff... This doesn't fly in New York. You know what happened today in New York? It mattered. Okay? Bleep mattered. My Giants just broomed out a GM with a Super Bowl, broomed out a coach who made the playoffs last year. And the record is one thing this year where the Giants are a dumpster fire, but you know what it was more about? Malfeasance. The, the bungling of a situation. The Giants screwed up with Eli Manning. John Mara was furious. So you know what he did? Did what a real owner did. He put a bullet in his coach. And then he put a bullet in the general manager. And said, so you're both out of here. Because you both embarrassed this organization. That's what a real owner does in a real city. Where it matters. You know what you're stuck with? You're stuck with an old lady who I don't know cares about football who I don't know she knows what she's doing. But I know she loves Jim Caldwell. You're stuck with her up in the press box, up, up, up in the luxury suite. And you got a GM and Bob Quinn who we don't know if he has the autonomy to get rid of Caldwell. Because you did something that I don't remember many teams ever doing. You brought in a new general manager but saddled him with the coach. See, that's where if it mattered to Martha and it mattered to the family and whoever's in on the unity council, Jim Caldwell would be a dead man walking today because what Jim Caldwell did yesterday was embarrassing. It was substandard. It is Mickey Mouse, second-rate, low-brow garbage. That's what it is, garbage. An NFL head coach that cannot get 11 guys on the field, that's garbage. But to have a third and seven take place where you only got nine on the field, you're fired. You're fired. But not here. Not in Detroit. Because what you poor SOBs are saddled with is a franchise that doesn't care. They can tell you they care. They can claim they care. They can tell you to do everything right. They don't care. Because if it mattered, if, if, if Martha burned to win and died to win, if this mattered, Jim Caldwell wouldn't be able to speak today in any official capacity as an employee at Alliance. Jim Caldwell would have been aced but it doesn't matter. I can say with authority 
It matters more to you, the fans, than it does this franchise because they have an incompetent human being coaching this team. The mistakes of Caldwell read like a, a, like a cartel member's rap sheet. The Hail Mary versus Green Bay, the challenge debacles, the bad clock management, the onside kick in Houston, the, 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 the end of the Green Bay game with only 10 men on the field, and luckily they missed a field goal. The mistakes are egregious. The Pittsburgh game this year, not taking the points, then taking the points, then not taking the points. This man is not an NFL head coach. It's clear to everybody. Everybody laughs at us. There's not another team in a league that would have Jim Caldwell as their head coach. They wouldn't do it. I love Jim Caldwell. And that's the problem. I don't believe in her. I don't believe in that family. I don't believe in any of this. Because this guy can't do the job. Now look, other franchises in this town have fired good people with good records, right? We've talked about Rick Carlisle. We've seen Red Wing coaches with good records and playoff appearances. But if you're not capable of doing the job at the highest level, you do not have an entitlement to a job. But not with the Lions. No, if they like you, they keep you around. If they think you're a good person, they keep you around. If the owner has favor, they keep you around. That is why the Detroit Lions are losers. That is why they celebrate making the playoffs with banners up until this year. And other people mark success with Super Bowls. Jim Caldwell should be fired. And I don't even need to get into how this team doesn't respond to him any longer. He's changed practice schedules to get off to faster starts. He took the ball instead of deferring to get to a faster start. I don't want to hear it. It's garbage. The last month, fallen behind by double digits every game. It's garbage. All of it. It's absolute garbage. But this guy being head coach, that's the biggest trash bag of all. Because he's not an NFL head coach. He's not. He's a welfare version of Marvin Lewis. And I don't want that. That's not acceptable. And a real organization would have come to the table today and they would have whacked this guy. Nine men on the field. You clawed your way back. You do what you always do. These pixie dust comebacks. You're within a score. Critical third down. You allowed Baltimore to go 11 on nine and grab 25 yards. That is a fireable offense. I I mean, please... But it doesn't matter here. So here's what we wait for. And I'll tell you right now, there's only one thing you can do as fans. It can save you the phone call. I'll throw the number out. I mean, here. Phone lines are wide open. 248-539-9797 on a reaction Monday. You dial on in. But at the end of this season, your franchise will be put to the final test. The final. And for some of you, you're already out. But at the end of the year, I don't care if they win the last four over flea bag teams. I don't care if they somehow backdoored into the playoffs to only get destroyed in the first round again. I don't care what they do. At the end of this season, either Jim Caldwell's gone or you now are on the clock as a fan because here's the deal. Your franchise is everything you feared it to be and Martha is no different than in, than her incompetent, deceased husband. She is one and the same, except better sunglasses. That's it. You either fire this man at the end of this year, since Lord knows you don't have the chops to do it right now. And if you don't, it means your general manager either doesn't have the power or is too dumb to do it. And neither of those works. So here, we'll sit here on Monday, December 4th, and I'm the nasty New Yorker who wants a guy fired, and maybe it's not fair to do it during the season. Maybe it doesn't accomplish anything. Okay, so I'll meet you in the middle. 
January 2nd, the day after this season ends, if Caldwell is still the coach, your GM's either a joke or a dummy. Take your pick. Because if I'm Bob Quinn and my professional life is tied to this man and he cannot run a game correctly, he had nine men on the field. That has never happened in NFL history, ever. I've never seen it. My dad is 62. He's watched more football than the rest of the universe. He's never seen it. If this man is still the head coach on that day, then you have a choice as a fan base because your GM will be revealed to either have no power or no common sense. And neither of those should work for you. It will also reveal that Martha is no different than old man Ford. And at that point, start 2018 and make a decision on what you want. Because if you're serious about football, you're serious about winning, this guy cannot be your head coach. Cannot. Cannot. The minute you discover you have anything other than a high-level NFL head coach, you replace that person. You don't let it linger. You don't keep him around because he's nice. You don't keep him around because he's got a winning record. If you do not have a high-level head coach, a man that you can trust is going to run the game right, then you replace him. If not immediately, then at the end of the year. That's it. That's all. I mean, yesterday was galling on on every level. Down 20 to nothing. Claw your way back. This guy's out here with nine men on the field. That is, that is unbelievable. You know, and I've said it before, and and you know what? It's about you guys. It's about you as fans. But I'm saying for me, sitting here on a Monday, I'm exhausted by this. I hate this team. I hate this organization. Beyond whatever nonsense, professional stuff they have tried to do to me, my coworkers, my station. Beyond all of that, I hate incompetence. They are incompetent. Just please give us an honest product, man. Come on. I, I, I'm just, I, I've, I've had it. And I, I'm sick that I got to come into work today and this man is still employed. Because in other towns, it matters. And it's not this way. And he would not be employed. And at the end of this year, that's the only compromise I can make. I do not care how it ends. He must be fired. And if he's not, Quinn and Martha, it may as well be old man Ford and Russ Thomas. It doesn't matter.